Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. From Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, and it says together, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Let's say that one more time with faith now. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. But thanks be to God, he said, Brock of Pokemon. Now I know 99% of you don't know who that, who that person is. But, but, and you don't watch that. But it's a, it's, a, it's a cartoon. His name is Brock and Pokemon. And I asked my son, why does Brock remind you of me? And he says, because like Brock, you set goals and you don't give up. And, and uh, I, I, wanna, I, I nodded my head and uh, I said, thank you, thank you. Um, and, and he also said, uh, uh, because he's chinky-eyed. No, no, he, no, because he said he also because he's a good mentor. And, but you know, the reason why I come, I, I bring you every Sunday not only to bring you closer to God, not only to bless you, but I want to teach you how to have dreams. How many of you believe that God has a purpose for your life? You believe in that? Yes. You're not an accident? No. You're not a blob that came out from the universe? That just, just came from a mist? And then you suddenly appeared? You believe that when God created you, He had an intention? He had a goal. He had a purpose for your life. Everybody say that. God has a purpose for my life. Do you want to know your purpose? Brothers and sisters, I'm a guy who likes to simplify things. When I teach, I simplify it to the barest minimum because I believe that's where the secret of success is, when you simplify things. If you want to discover your purpose in life, you do not have to read 103 books. You don't have to attend another 300 seminars. You don't have to go on top of a mountain and meditate in lotus position, meditating for the next 10 years, trying to think of how and what is your purpose in life. You don't have to do that. Ask me, how? how? Do I know my purpose in life? Just two simple questions. That's all. Two simple questions. Ask yourself this, number one, what are my core gifts? And number two, what is my passion in life? That's it. Brother Bo, napaka simple naman yan. I think that's too simple. No, it's not. When God created you, He put core gifts in you and it's for the purpose. You know, and when He created you with a passion to do something, let me tell you my story. I'm sure I've shared this already with you before. When I was a kid, when people, when people, when, when my teachers would teach in school and in the classroom, you'd see me writing down furiously in my notebook. I'd be just, you know, my teacher would be there teaching and, and I'd be there with, in, in my notebook, buried my face in my notebook. But I'm not taking down notes. I'm drawing. Now some of you, some of you who have a, who, who, who remember when you were kids, or, or maybe some, you, you, you'd, you'd remember yourself, or maybe you'd remember your classmates doing that. I would draw and draw and draw. I'd draw Superman, I'd draw Aquaman, I'd draw The Flash, and then when I hit puberty, I drew Wonder Woman, and, <laughs> and I drew and drew, and you know what, what happened? After a while, I began to invent my own superhero. It was called, he was called Super Kid. And he was someone who knew Kung Fu and Judo. I wrote the whole story in my mind. And I wrote it down. It was my own comic book. And you know what? It, it was, I remember, it, it was my secret identity. Like I was the one. I was super kid, you know? And, and it, it was fun just being able to do that as a kid. Well, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that was my core gift. And to this day, I still draw. But here's the difference. The difference is I no longer use my pencil and my paper to draw. Now I use my words, my adjectives, my adverbs, <laughs> and my verbs, and my sentences, and my paragraphs to draw pictures in your mind. 
Every time I write and every time I speak and preach to you, people ask me that question, Brother Bo, I want to preach like you. Brother Bo, I want to write like you. What should I do? When you, when you re write a book, you know, pe people like it. And when people, when you preach and people listen, they're, they're, they're listening to you. Why? And I tell them why. Because when I preach and when I write, I still draw pictures. I still draw pictures in your mind. And, and when I preach, you, you know what I'm saying? When I preach, you see what I'm, I'm, the story I'm sharing. You know, my training was in the drawing. It was a core gift. You, you see what I'm saying? Not only that, I asked myself, what's my passion? Say that with me. Passion. What is your passion? What is the thing that you do that when you do it, you're alive? You know what? Last night, I had fever. I had fever in my body. It was high fever. And you know, on the back of my mind, as I was lying down on the couch of my home with, with fever, my body racked with fever, I said to myself, how can I preach tomorrow morning? You know, maybe I need to call up another preacher. But then, passion took over. I was inspired by a story that I read that made me say, no, I'm going to preach. I don't care if I'm going to have fever. This is my calling. This is my passion. This is my purpose. And I will preach the gospel. You know what story I read? You want to know what story I read? Yes. It would have been nice to tell you, I read the story of St. Francis of Assisi. Or read, I read the story of St. John Vianney. Or, or St. John Bosco. You know, when they were sick, they still kept on serving God. No. I read the story of Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> I read an article about him a few days ago. A few days ago, you know, you know where Manny Pacquiao is right now, right? He's training. He's training, I think, somewhere in the U.S. And guess what? In that news article I, wrote, I read, he, it said there that he had fever. He had high fever the night before. And you know what he did the next day? He trained anyway. He went into sparring anyway. Why? Because of passion. I'm going to ask you that question. What is the thing that God calls you to do that even if you're sick, you'll still do it? Even, e even if there's some problems, you'll still do it. You got what I'm saying? And I was telling myself last night, if Manny Pacquiao, even he had fever, he'll still, he'll still train because of an earthly goal. Why not me? I'm sick tonight, but I'm going to preach the gospel tomorrow and bless people. Why? Not for an earthly reward, but for a heavenly reward. I want to bless people, and I want to love people that next day. It might be to, to bless people through through your accounting, or it might be to be a businessman, or it might be to be a mother, or it might be to be, to be a, 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 a leader. You know, I, I don't know, but you know. And, and you'll, you'll just have to ask those two questions again and again and again. And when God calls you for a life purpose, He also gives you dreams. Everybody say dreams. dreams. Now there are dreams. And there are soul dreams. Everybody say soul dreams. soul dreams. What do I mean by soul dreams? You know, before I talk about soul dreams, I have just one thing to tell you. Don't diversify. Say that with me, please. Don't diversify. When you have, it's so, it's so easy to diversify. God calls you to do one thing, and it's so easy to be distracted and to diversify. Diversify only when it comes to the stock market. But don't diversify when it comes to your core gifts and when it comes to your passion. Imagine with me Michael Jordan playing baseball. Can you imagine? You don't have to imagine because he really did it. What if Michael Jordan played ba baseball? You know, he actually did. After winning seven times in the Chicago Bulls, the whole NBA tournament, you know, seven times, you know what he did? He resigned, retired, and then he went to baseball. For the first time in minor league Chicago, <laughs> the baseball was filled with fans. But regular, you know, when it's a regular season, they, there, there are no people who watch. But just because it's Michael Jordan, fans would come in droves. But all of them, all of them were disappointed. Because when they watched, they were looking for the great Michael Jordan. But when he held the bat, he was like an ordinary player. 
he was not good the way they wanted him to be. Why? Because he diversified. You got what I'm saying? What if Tiger Woods decided to say, you know, I'm so good at golf. My gosh, I'm so good at golf. I'm now bored. Why don't I become a boxer? <laughs> yeah, why not? Why, why don't? I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, just, I might be, I might not be, you know, there come a, there'll come a time I'll not be a good golfer anymore. Maybe it would be a disaster, right? Or what if Efren Bata, who's a good billiard player, would suddenly say, okay, I want to diversify. I'm, I'm, I'm so good as a billiard player, I'll, I'll, sh I'll just go to basketball this time and, and, and be a basketball player. <laughs> now, again, I'm going to tell you it's going to be a disaster. You, you know, you focus on what you're what God has given to you, do other things. I mean, it's okay if once in a while Efren Bata will play basketball with his son. That's okay. But it won't be the, 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 the very thing that he will do to, 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 to bless people. I'm going to... The first sign of a soul dream is this. It's, it connects you, or at least it doesn't distract you from your life purpose. You got me? You got me? Okay, it says in John 15, If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. Let me, let me share with you something very personal. I've, I've shared it already in my book, The Eight Secrets of the Truly Rich. But there was a time in my life when I decided I wanted to be a millionaire. Now, that was very uncomfortable for me. I shared, I shared there in my book how I was so uncomfortable with the thought of having money. I mean, I wanted to be like St. Francis. I wanted to give all my money to the poor and all of that. I did not want to think about money, but a conversion experience happened when I started, when I wanted to help people. How many of you have had an experience of wanting to help people? You want to really help people. You really, really want to help. You can't do it. Why? Because you don't have anything to help with. You got what I'm saying? And I had that experience again and again and again. And I told myself, Lord, Okay, I want to be, and, and this was absurd, totally hilarious, I wanted to be a millionaire missionary. Have you ever heard of that phrase? Millionaire missionary. It was so downright, totally, completely absurd. I told myself, this is crazy. This is, but, but in my heart, it was a dream. Now, how in the world would I become a millionaire missionary you know and I said it, it doesn't have to be I, I, I could I could I could be I could have money and be able to help so many people and now you come here every Sunday right now question do you pay me no nothing I come here and I preach and it's for free right whatever you give in the love offering basket it doesn't go to me it doesn't. It goes to the ministry. So I come here preaching for free. How in the world will I become a millionaire? Huh? Huh? Parishes invite me for free, you know? Prayer groups invite me for free. How will I be a millionaire? Well, a few years ago, a company invited me. And then after that, many other companies invited me. And they would ask me, Bo, preach, speak to our employees. And I would say, sure. And then they'll ask me, how much? And I said, oh, it's for free. Because I'm used to preaching for free. And so I'd go there, and this is what struck me. I'm, I'm there, for example, nice place, Shangri-La, with a, with a chandelier on top. Huh? Nice stage. And the company hired an MC. The company hired singers, Jaja Padilla, and, and great singers. And, and one time, after giving my 45-minute talk, I sat down to enjoy the singing. And when, the, when, the, when I, I sat down beside the MC, it was my friend. And, then, and the MC said, Bo, do you know how much that singer was hired? H how much they're paying that singer? I said, how much? They're paying her 100,000 pesos to sing three songs. Wow. <laughs> well, after she sang, I left. And before I left, the, the HR manager of that company said, Brother Bo, thank you for speaking. It was really a blessing to all of us in the company. And then she gave me an envelope. And I left that place, I opened the envelope, and it was enough for my gas. 
it was enough for my gas. Now, the reason why, why? Because I wasn't asking, right? The company paid for Shangri-La. They had money. The company paid for singers. The company paid for the MC. The company paid for the, for the lights and the, and the sp- but they didn't pay the speaker because he wasn't asking. So I made a decision, I'm going to ask. And I'm going to charge an arm and a leg. And so now when companies invite me, I charge an arm and a leg. Guess what? They pay. They do. And I'm able to help people because of that. But here's, here's something I'd like to share with you. This is a secret just between you and me. <laughs> Don't tell any of these companies, okay? Whatever I tell them, whatever I preach to them, guess what? I give to you here every Sunday for free. <laughs> and if they, wanted, if they wanted to save money, all they have to do is send their employees here every Sunday. <laughs> I mean, really. But do you see what I'm saying? I haven't diversified. I wanted to earn money, but I did not diversify. I still kept on preaching the Word and preaching the love of God. Now think with me. You think I'm a happy person? Yes. Sign number four. You know, let's skip two and three first. But fourth sign is that it makes you happy in the deepest way possible. Do you think I'm a happy person? Yes. Believe you me, brothers and sisters, I wake up every morning and I, I tell myself I'm going to have fun today. I don't go to work. You think I go to work? No. Every day I have fun. Every day I play. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. Life is short. If you're not having fun with what you're doing, pray and ask God that you have fun, that you, have, that you do what you're passionate about. Amen? Amen? I was talking to a businessman. He has passion for his business. He loves his business. He loves earning money and he loves selling his product. And, and I told him, do you work? And he said, no, I don't. I don't. I wake up every morning and I have fun. And I said, that's it. That's what it means. What's your passion? And what are your core gifts? Have fun with it. Tell someone beside you, be happy. Be happy. Find a way to be happy. Find a way. Here's sign number two. Sign number two is that it's your, your soul dream. Everybody say that again. Soul dream. soul dream. It's connected to your deepest values. It's connected to your deepest values. You know, let me tell you a story. When I was 16, I watched the movie of, uh, of uh, Michael J. Fox, Back to the Future. And when I watched that movie, I saw that Michael J. Fox was riding a Toyota 4x4 pickup. And I fell in love with that car. And as a 16-year-old boy, 17, 18-year-old boy, I said to myself, I'm going to own a car one day just like that. And you know what? I went to my father and I said, Dad, what car do you, will you give me? And he said, no, I'll not give you a car. And, and I'll just give you a little money, but you have to add to it. And so that he gave me 40,000 pesos. I added the little savings I had. I could not buy a second-hand, even a second-hand Toyota 4x4 pickup. So when I was in my 20s, my first car was a puny, tiny, scrawny, underpowered, owner-type Jeep. <laughs> that was my first car. It was assembled in the backyard. And, you know, it, it, it had second-hand tires because I could not afford brand new tires. Today, brothers and sisters, I want you to know something. I can buy a 4x4 Toyota pickup. I really can. You know, there's such a thing as down payments and monthly amortization. But I, it's the last car I will buy. True, I dreamt for it. I really wanted it when I was younger. Now, it'll be the last thing I will buy. Why? Because along the way, I got married. I have a beautiful wife. I've got two boys. I've got friends who like riding in my car. Brother Bo, can we hitch? Of course. I cannot tell them, go up the pickup under the heat of the sun. Hold on to dear life. No, I want them. My values have changed. Some of your dreams you will outgrow. You got me? Some of your dreams you will outgrow. And you will realize that there are some dreams that you will not outgrow because they're real, 
they're, folk, they're rooted in your deepest values. There was this man who was such a miser. He was a greedy, greedy man. And he told his wife, Wife, when I die, I want all our money to be in my coffin. <laughs> that was his dream. His dream was that when he dies, every single cent that he had would be buried with him. You know, his sisters, his kamag-anak, relatives, friends, told his wife, don't follow him. But the wife said, I'm a faithful woman, I will. The man finally died. And when he died, when they were burying him underneath the ground, six feet under, as the coffin was being lowered, the wife stood up and said, wait, open the coffin. And they opened the coffin and she brought with her a safety deposit box made of steel, small one. And she said, please put this in the coffin. And everyone wanted to say, 